Hi my beauties, welcome to my channel. So if you're a new subscriber, I just want to reintroduce myself. My name is Dr. Stephanie Kappel and usually I'm posting content on my Instagram account of me in my office doing procedures and lasers and things like that. But I have this YouTube channel which I try to just get education and content out to you guys. Anyone who wants to learn and you know stay updated in different um, aesthetic and dermatologic treatments, new products, and I will always keep you guys updated. And the thing with my YouTube channel is that it's not perfectly edited beautiful videos. I'm literally in my bathroom in my pajamas right now because I'm also a mom of two kids but I know that you guys don't follow me for beautiful videos you follow me for my content which I just want to deliver to you so be sure to subscribe and um, click the bell so you can get notifications every time I post up a video I try to do a video once a week and then I also do a live Q&A on all my social media platforms but also on my YouTube channel where I can interact with you guys and um talk to you in real time and answer all the questions and comments that you guys have. Topics that I select to do a video each week are usually things that are coming up a lot in questions and comments. My patients in my office are asking me about things that are popping up or gaining popularity on social media or reality shows, different procedures, things like that. So today I wanted to focus on Threadless because I know that this is a procedure that's gaining a lot of popularity. Although it's not really a new technology or a new treatment, um, it's gaining a lot of popularity in recent months. And I know my own patients are asking me a lot about it. I do Threadless all the time. I have been for, gosh, since 2014, so a long, long time. Um, and it's a really amazing in-office procedure that's minimally invasive for those who want a little um, improvement in their contour, a little bit more volume or collagen stimulation and, re and rest restoration, and for people who want to improve the contour or lift, tighten, and pull certain areas and they don't want to have surgery. So it's a great option, and when it's done correctly, it has amazing results. It's healthy for your skin. There's no scar tissue, no incisions, and um, no really deleterious outcomes that can happen when done appropriately and correctly by a highly trained provider. So thread lifts are popular among all types of patients, men, women, younger, more mature. So for my younger beauties, my younger patients, um, it's usually to improve the contour of their face. If they don't really have a pronounced jawline or they have a hypoplastic chin or they don't like uh, their profile, they just want a little bit more definition or they want a little bit of more like a fox eye. So that's where um, we're doing a lot of thread lifts um, for the younger patients. And for my more mature patients who may not be ready to have surgery or may not ever want surgery and they want like a little lift, like a little neck lift, a lower face lift, brow lift without surgery, it's a amazing treatment for that. So in addition to improving the contour of the face or the neck or any body part that you're doing your thread lift procedure on, um, it also is a really potent stimulator, stimulatory um, mechanism for collagen stimulation. So it stimulates collagen, it actually stimulates hyaluronic acid and restores volume where there's areas of volume loss as well. So it, it's multifactorial in why thread lifts look so good and usually the patient will look immediately better after the thread lift procedure is done in the office, but the improvement continues as the months go on. So usually when my patients come in uh, two weeks after their follow-up just to make sure that everything's doing okay, they look better obviously because there's that mechanistic, you know, mechanical pulling or lifting of the skin or immediate improvement of the contour. But as the threads stimulate collagen, hyaluronic acid, and more of the ground substance of our skin, it just plumps the skin and gives a more youthful, beautiful contour through that mechanism of action as well. So patients after a thread lift procedure usually look their best three months after the threads are placed. And the stimulation of collagen usually lasts for about 12 to 15 months after the threads are placed and that collagen lasts for up to two years. So it just depends on every individual is different, their metabolic activity is different. And also on a more mature patient, if they have thread lifts, you know, if it's gonna last about one to two years in that interim, your face may also be changing through the aging process. So it's hard to tell are the thread lifts losing their effectiveness or is the collagen you know, stimulation process diminishing or are you actually just losing your own volume with bone resorption and all the changes that happen with the aging face as well. So patients sometimes ask how long would this last? I typically say about one to two years, but that can vary with patients' age and the goals that they're trying to achieve and what they're trying to correct. Now there's also various types of thread lifts. There's different threads that have been launched and uh, the technology is always improving, which is why dermatology and aesthetics is such an exciting field. There's always updated technology and improvement in not only procedures and different you know techniques that we use, but it's, it's consistently improving on itself. So back in 2014, I actually participated in uh, the post-clinical trials for something called InstaLift. So I was just a fellow at the time completing my uh, fellowship in procedural dermatology and I did thousands of these cases. So thousands, uh, day in, day out, placing these this InstaLift threads and I got really good at it and I think that 
that just re repetition and packing in all those cases just when I was a fellow and then continuing to do the thread lift procedure since, you know, since that time. And now I have my own practice. This is, gosh, like 10 years later, um, I've, I've, I've mastered this technique. And I have to tell you that it really is operator dependent. Um, there's some states, I, I practice in the state of California in Orange County, Newport Beach. Um, there's some states where I don't even think you have to have an MD or you know you can be like a licensed esthetician to place these threads. Now, sometimes if you see people posting less than desirable outcomes or things gone wrong or lumps or bumps or a weird tightening effect or you can see the threads through, that should never happen when you're in the hands of a skilled provider. So not only would I recommend seeing an MD, but definitely a highly trained physician who has had you know post you know, residency fellowship advanced training in placing these threads because I feel fortunate to have participated in the install of cl clinical trials because I got so many cases under my belt. I can get it into the right dermal plane and cannulate that, you know, that thread, no problem. Um, but for somebody who's just starting out or opening a practice or isn't really well versed in surgery and knows their anatomy very well, um, you know, it, it's, it's definitely repetition as a provider and just doing thousands of these cases and just getting really good at it. So back in 2014, when I started with InstaLift, I loved those threads. They were giving amazing results. And then I adopted Mint. So you'll hear M-I-N-T. It's a Korean thread lift brand. Loved those. They worked really well. And now I use PDO threads. So, and to correct myself, before Mint, I used PDO, then Mint. And then I went back to PDO because they updated the technology. So there's so many different thread lifts out there and the different products that we can use. Um, but most of the components of these threads are things like PGA, uh, PLA, LA, which stands for um, polyolactic acid. It's basically the same substance that's in biostimulatory fillers. So Sculptra is an injectable stimulatory filler that stimulates your fibroblast to make collagen, elastin, hyaluronic acid, and restore volume. Well, the thread lifts are made up of that same type of um, stimulatory um, component. So it's going to stimulate your skin cells to make that volume. So, so PDO just stands for polydiaxone. PLLA stands for polyolactic acid. There's PGA and there's a lot of other components of the threads, but they are all pretty much similar in their ability to stimulate collagen and uh, volume in the face or the skin or any area that you inject. And then the types of threads can also vary. So there's barbed threads, there's smooth threads, and these threads can uh, vary on size, length, and caliber as well. So if you need more of like a lifting capacity, say if somebody has you know lower face laxity or some jowls or really needs to contour that jawline, you're gonna get a thicker, more robust, a larger caliber thread that's gonna kind of pull on that area as opposed to the smooth threads that you would use more for collagen stimulation and really not any uh, mechanistic pulling uh, activity. So for example, the smooth threads will usually go around like the lip line area um, under the eye to kind of help give a little boost of collagen in that area. Um, areas that are a little bit more def delicate and that you just want to smooth the contour um, with correcting laxity fine lines and wrinkles through collagen stimulation with just a smooth thread. So we're moving into an era where surgery is becoming less common. You know, people don't want the surgical scars. They don't want the downtime. They don't want to have to go undergo general anesthesia in, in an operating room and have a, a bigger procedure. We have radio frequency devices, tightening devices, minimally invasive procedures, and thread lifts is a great component to our minimally invasive or non-invasive uh, techniques to help rejuvenate the face or any other area of the body that needs rejuvenation without surgery. Now, a lot of plastic surgeons will not like the fact that providers are doing threadless. Of course, they want you in their OR and they want to be operating on you. So just you know, cite your source. If you're reading reviews online and you see a negative review of someone who didn't have a great outcome or had a complication from a thread lift, it may have not been done by a highly trained provider. Um, it may have been from a plastic surgeon's office who doesn't want to be doing threadless. They want to just be operating on their patients. So it's always just important to just cite your source just you know as an educator and um, someone who you know teaches residents and in, in dermatology residents and medical students I always say to cite your source and where is that information coming from and just like myself I'm a minimally invasive non-invasive uh, provider so I don't you know do facelifts or neck lifts or brow lifts so my alternatives are going to be non-surgical however if someone is not a candidate for a minimally invasive procedure meaning their laxity or their defect that they want to correct is beyond you know the um 
the the breach of something that I can do with a minimally invasive technique, I'm the first person to refer to a plastic surgeon or a surgeon if they um, need a, something that's corrected that's beyond my level of expertise that I can do just with minimally invasive techniques. So I, as myself as a provider, offer that to my patients. And I just think that, you know, when you're reading these different treatments online and reading about different reviews and things like that, just keep that in mind. And, you know, I think that every physician should practice um, in that way, just lay out different options for patients. And if that seems something that's, you know, along what their goals are, then great, give them options. But if it's something that's gonna be something beyond, for example, if somebody wants a full facelift result and they have really severe laxity, you know, and they're in their, you know, seventh or eighth decade of life, I'm gonna to refer to probably a plastic surgeon. If he or she doesn't wanna undergo surgery, which I completely understand and support that, many of my patients don't, um, then we could see how, you know, how much we can do with just you know, minimally invasive procedures like threadless or tightening devices and so forth. So as far as complications uh, with threadless when they're not performed uh, correctly, uh, you'll note that sometimes you can see the thread through or there could be bumps. Now these are easily reversible and corrected um, and there's ways to do that, but they shouldn't happen in the first place if you're in the correct dermal plane. It's just, again, comes from a lot of repetition and understanding where that dermal placement is and that just is something that comes with years and even decades of experience. So if you do see these complications, the good thing is, is that most of them, as far as I am concerned, are reversible. Um, there's no incisions, you know, there's just a, a needle that goes into the area. Um, there's no scar tissue. It's a healthy stimulation of collagen, not like a scar tissue um, stimulation of collagen that would impede you from maybe later having a surgery. And as far as the downtime, usually my patients, you know, it takes about 20 minutes to do the procedure in the office. I have them just kind of uh, lay low and not work out for about two weeks after the procedure because we want the um, the threads to kind of settle into place and not get dislodged. You know, no biting into like a big sandwich or laughing really hard with your mouth open, things like that. So we just kind of, or chewing gum. We just have you just kind of minimize, you know, the, the activity level of like the jawline, especially if it's in the lower face or neck and um, just kind of minimize that activity just until the threads settle. But the downtime's actually not bad at all. I mean, there's hardly any bruising. There's hardly that much swelling. There shouldn't be and um, patients are you know feeling good afterwards there's not much pain um, usually I'll recommend some extra strength Tylenol for the first 24 to 48 hours after the threads are placed but it shouldn't be scary it should be a pleasant experience um, I recommend it every one to two years for you know for all my patients who are undergoing the thread lift procedure again you can do it for contour to sharpen the jawline for neck lift facelift lower neck lift facelift brow lift and um, it's just a great alternative to surgery and um, as far as i'm concerned it's one of the best minimally invasive procedures that we have to offer today so I hope those of you who watch this video understand a little bit more about thread lifts, you know, how they work, um, what the expectations are, and where their place is in our aesthetic armamentarium, you know, regarding lasers, tiny devices, thread lifts, injectables, surgery. There's so many things that we can do, um, and thread lifts have their little niche into what they can uh, provide for us um, in aesthetics and rejuvenation and um, improvement in our appearance. So I hope this helps you guys. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. I'll keep these videos coming to you and uh, keep the content coming out to you too, and we'll always keep you updated on the latest in dermatology. Thank you.